Hey folks, we're out here with another episode of Oxygen Not Included. We're on cycle 31 with a new save here. We've got pretty much a basic base going here, nothing special. We've got a washroom put in, we've got a barracks, we've got a great hall. Started up our kitchen, got some rudimentary food in here. Uh, medium, mid-game power going on down here with a little couple of oxiferns to kill the CO2. And we've dug out most of our starting biome. So we're in pretty good shape and really ready to make the step into early mid-game. And so what you basically want to do at this point, you probably want to start looking at the, at the biomes around you and picking one to go into to get the resources out. Now, this particular map, we've got a slime biome here and a slime biome down here. And then everything else is caustic biome. And caustic biome is pretty good, but if you look at the temperature here, 45 degrees in here, 45 degrees, 45 degrees, it's pretty hot. And right now we've got this kind of retaining wall of granite around our base, uh, really except in this area here that's keeping this hot from getting in. But if you look at the slime biome, it's about the same. It's a little bit hotter than our base, but it's not going to heat overheat us to cook us in, in the early game. So we don't want to cook our base, we don't want to go into the caustic biome yet. But we do want to get some mid-game resources. So let's talk a little bit about the slime biome and what it can do for you. Uh, the metal in here is gold amalgam. Nice thing about gold amalgam is that it has a higher overheat temperature than copper. So it's really good for building machines and such. Looks like this particular biome we're going to get a little bit of iron too, which is nice. Just have a little bit and some coal from this neighboring caustic biome. And we can get that without breaking into this abyss light. So that's attractive. It's got a lot of slime, and it's got slime lung germs, so we want to avoid those. But we're not too worried about it. It's not quite as devastating as you might think. But the slime biome and the slime can be useful for a couple things. We can use this to feed mushrooms and get a better food source than what we have right now, which is mealwood. Or we can turn it into both polluted water and algae through refinement. So that's good. It's also got some algae that we can turn into oxygen. It's got some clay that we can turn into ceramic, which is great. And then there's a couple of really important seeds in here. Uh, one of which is the, what is it called again? Here's the thimble reed seed. And these produce reed fiber, which we use for both Atmos suits and there's some art that we make with it. We make snazzy suits, all sorts of cool stuff that you can make about reed fiber. We're gonna build 20 of those uh, to get the 10 Atmos suits we need to really catapult to the mid game. And then the second one is fungal spores, which will allow us to make dust caps. So dust caps are a really good food source. They use slime, which is, you know, kind of a waste product. I mean, you can turn it into polluted water, but it's, it's not great. <laughs> so you don't mind getting rid of it. So we're going to go after those two things. We're going to speed things up a little bit. All right, so we've dug through the top, or at least uh, close to the top, this slime biome. Well, we set up a couple of deodorizers here to deal with any polluted oxygen coming out. If we were really worried about a lot of polluted oxygen coming out, we might set up an airlock here. But it doesn't look like we're going to hit too much um, polluted oxygen, and these two deodorizers should be able to take care of it. So what we're going to do first is we're just going to grab all of the stuff that's unreachable from the top of our ladder, just because we don't want to put another ladder up here and dig through the abyss light. So we're going to grab this stuff up at the top, which we can't normally reach. And as soon as we got all that... up a little bit. There we go. Now we'll start digging out the rest of this. So what we want to do is we want to well, we want to make sure that we don't have any leakage of this polluted water. So we want the polluted water to fall down to the bottom and we want to dig all the way across here and set up uh, deodorizers here to catch the polluted oxygen. So right now our guys are operating in slime lung, which isn't great. So we want to make sure that we turn that into regular oxygen as soon as possible. Another one of the benefits of coming in here is obviously there's a lot of polluted oxygen in here that we can turn into regular oxygen. So right now we're living off just this one little oxygen diffuser and this will add a little bit of, of oxygen to our base. So. Looks like the guy's done a pretty good job here. Let's grab this stuff up at the top here. So as you can see, the guys have hacked through the bulk of the slime biome. And we have a nice little strip of oxygen here that the guys can breathe without getting into too much trouble. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add in every fourth level. We're just going to go with one 
things. We don't need a block there. We're just gonna go with one deodorizer because we should be able, that should be enough to get the whole level. We'll put in the ladders here. We're using sedimentary rock here because that's the local the local material, so. Oh, that's actually five. We want to do four. That's better. While the guys finish that off, we'll take a look down here. So what we did here is we planted our two thimble reed seeds here. And you can see we've got a toilet here. We're not going to use recycled water here because we want to kickstart our thimble reed production. So we're going to use the polluted water that we get from using the toilets to power these two thimble reeds. And that should be enough to get us up to the 20 or so reed fiber that we need to uh, start making that more suit. So we've also got a potential pip farm here. Um, we're going to destroy these many airlocks and create some some natural tiles and then we're going to plant the rest of the thimble reed. And that'll give us a sustainable source of thimble reed, which reminds me we should probably grab these pips when we do get the ranching ability. So all told that took about five cycles, mainly because we've only got four dupes and only one is assigned to digging. So we'll take a look at what we got going on here. Looks like we picked up, we got 51 tons of algae, so we're not going to be running out of that anytime soon. Nine and a half tons of slime. Um, we got 19 tons of clay, which is probably enough for end game. And we picked up 15 tons of gold amalgam. And for seeds, we got more than enough thimble reeds to get through the entire plan that we got going on and then we also got 11 fungal spores so I think what we're gonna do we're gonna take a look and see where looks like there's not really that much carbon dioxide in here so if we're gonna put in some plants let's check the temperature here 30 yeah that's all good down here so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put in a line of farm tiles let's go eight and eight oh, I got it right the first time eight and eight, and then we'll put in a storage receptacle for slime. We'll fill that up with water. Just high proud these ones so we can get the water in quickly. There you have it. So pretty jury rig little temporary fungal spore setup. We'll get them all the way across here. Let's actually turn this into a proper farm. Even if it's going to be temporary, this is really quite jury rigged, but it'll do the trick until we can get a proper one. I don't want to be stepping into the slime if we can avoid it, so I'll make a little door here. And what this will do is kill these two first. This will allow us to use our micronutrient fertilizer. So we'll put that in there. Actually, I guess we should automate this, right? So we should leave room for the automator. Just cut all that down with this run. We'll put the slime in here. Just having a little bit of water in there, 200 kilograms, that's more than enough to make sure that the slime doesn't off gas. And there you have it. In about 10 turns, we managed to hack out this entire slime biome and we've installed a superior food source. So we could probably, we got 60,000 calories here. We could probably rip out this mealwood farm. Yeah, so we've used the first of the resources we pulled out of this slime biome, or the second actually. First thing we did is we managed to, to bring in these thimble reeds, which aren't getting quite enough irrigation here, but that's all right. They'll eventually... They're going to pop out enough reed fibers eventually, and then we'll rip that out and do something else with that room. Um, we should probably turn this into a pip ranch now that we have the ranching ability, so that'll be great. And now we've got this this farm here. So um, Next up on the list, I guess we've got... What else did we get out of there? We got some, we got some gold amalgam, six tons of it. It's not a lot, but it's enough to do what we need to do. And uh, let's start planning our power for mid-game. All right, now, so what we've done here is we've installed a brick here to stop the water from coming down and run a gas pipe for carbon dioxide here. We always do the vents last, so we'll put a piece of priority on that. And we've got some of this slime down here. Use the deodorizer to catch the off-gassing. And what we're doing is we're installing some natural gas generators where the 
carbon dioxide is going to come up here and feed into this area so that our mushrooms keep growing. I, th I think they'd be pretty much fine if we just left it like this forever, but we've got to put the CO2 somewhere, so that might as be might as well be where it goes. And then in our next video, we're going to take a look at running the natural gas over here when we attack a different biome. It would be the, the tide biome, I think it's called, whatever, the saltwater biome. And then we're going to get some natural gas in here so that we can get off of this coal, which this actually serves us pretty well. I kind of like having the two oxyphorns here, keeping the keeping the CO2 under control down here. But that'll be for our next video. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe.